Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Impact M3 is here and it is mind-blowingly brilliant. Now, I hate to spoil the party straight away, but I'm not going to be doing a full review today. Reason being is that I just got this gun this morning and I do not like to do in-depth reviews of products until I've actually had a good amount of time to get to know them more intimately, see how everything works and actually test things in challenging environments. So a month or two down the line, we're gonna do a full review. But what I do wanna to do today is to run through all the new features, maybe just discuss them very briefly, but this isn't really gonna be a discussion video, it's more just gonna be telling you what's new in this gun because there's some really cool stuff here. Before we jump head first into all the new features, let me just say that I was reminded once again this morning just how versatile the impact is and how customizable it is as a platform. It arrived this morning, I took it out the box, and the very first thing I did was to make it feel like my previous generation impact. What I mean by that is, I put on the thicker ergo grip that FX offers, because this is the grip I was using on my previous gun. I adjusted the trigger to make it feel exactly the same as my previous trigger, and I put the scope on so when I shoulder the gun, it feels exactly the same as my previous impact. This is what I do at competitions overseas. I don't even use my own gun. I borrow someone else's gun and I maybe bring with my own grip and that's about it. I set it up to feel the same and that's what I've done with this gun. And obviously, as you can see, I've added my own scope, Element Nexus, a good gun needs a good scope. I've put a bar pod on and a Donny FL moderator in the front. Aside from that, this is a stock standard gun from the factory, have not changed anything internally. So what makes the M3 different from its predecessor? Are all the changes cosmetic? You know, obviously you can see it looks really nice from the outside, the laser engraving, the, the machining, it looks modern around the edges. Or are there actually significant changes to the way it performs? Well, I can tell you straight there are many significant changes to the way it performs and the way all the moving parts engage with each other. It's so much to run through, so let's start from the back and we'll move our way towards the front of the gun in no order of significance. So starting right at the back with the butt pad, this has been restyled a bit from the previous impacts. So you can see it's basically the same as the Maverick butt pad with all the triangles. No performance upgrade, it just looks a bit nicer. I'm probably gonna switch this out with a Sabre Tactical or PR Systems or Crappit and Lipped butt pad just to give this gun a little bit of an edge, but nothing wrong with the factory one. Um, moving slightly forward, you will see one of the features that stands out the most is the new power plenum. This is clearly a bit larger than the, the previous one. This is 72, cubic centimeters, hence the name Power Plenum 720. And this is not just for looks. Essentially what the Power Plenum does is it changes the way that the, the pressure curve behaves through a shot cycle. So the way that the pressure climbs when the valve's opened and how the pressure stays and how it comes down and everything. And basically this just allows you to get more performance out of a given reg pressure. So, at 100 bar with the M3, you'll be able to get more velocity or more shots per fill, depending on which way you want to go. I'm pretty excited about this from a high power shooting point of view, because we now have the slug power kit and we have um, just 
improved performance that allows us to shoot heavy slugs with a high ballistic coefficient at high speeds and this is just another another step up from the Mark II. One of the things I'm really excited about as a slug shooter is the availability of the slug power kit, the adjustable seating depth adjustable probe and you know a few power upgrades as well things like that but the one issue I had with the Mark II is that you couldn't really get the full velocity advantage out of the pin style probe without having a half flow transfer port. The previous impact had the dual transfer ports but it had a one for like really low power pellets and another one for slightly high power but nothing quite like this. With the new brass port that comes standard with the M3, you've got one marked P for pellets, which works perfectly with a pellet probe, and you've got one marked S for slugs, which has a bridge over it. So essentially, once your slug probe is in, you get maximum airflow efficiency through here, and with that bridge in the middle, the slug will slide over that without its nose falling in the transfer port, which is a problem with other designs. So super happy about that, and it's very, very versatile. Moving a little bit forward again, this was one of the changes that had already kind of happened halfway through the life cycle of the Mark II. But I'll say it again, the Picatinny rail on top has a 20 MOA tilt to it. This is really great because not only does it allow your scope to be more optically centered when you're zeroing at like 20 to 50 yards, which is really good for the optical performance of the scope, but it also extends the turret travel range of your scope, which essentially means you're getting like 20 MOA or six mils of extra elevation, which means you can obviously reach further. So really glad that they put that in as standard. The trigger feels pretty much the same as the, the previous uh, generation impact, but I did notice one improvement. The trigger shoe, or trigger itself, is on a rail which can actually be adjusted forward and back. I really like this because on some of my firearms, the trigger is much closer to my hand, so it feels a bit different. With this, I'm able to bring it back and just match all my rifles together, which means that when I switch from one to the other, I, can, I have that consistency and I can set it exactly where I want it. So I'm really glad that they did that change. Now we get to the really big stuff. So, Listen carefully. <laughs> cocking lever. The cocking lever is ambidextrous, so you can switch it from one side to the other. There were aftermarket kits that allowed you to do this previously, but now it's standard. So if you're a lefty, that'll be good news for you. The cocking lever itself has also been shortened slightly, which makes the stroke a little bit easier if you keep your hand on the pistol grip while you're cocking, which is what I do when I'm doing like speed shooting or just any shooting in general. And there's this awesome large knurled cocking handle as well which is just really really easy to grip no matter whether you've got um, sweaty fingers or whether you're wearing gloves or or anything it's just really really nice to hold on to and shoot quickly with no more fingers sliding off halfway through while you're cocking i don't know if it's just me but the whole system also feels a bit smoother Maybe I just took so many shots with my previous impacts that they wore out a bit, but this one definitely feels smoother when I'm cocking it. There's also beauty in the small details, like for example, there used to be a rubber ball over here to kind of help with that block when it moves forward. They've now replaced that with a steel pin that's spring-loaded, which kind of takes up the tension when you push the lever forward like this and it just feels really, really good. So it's those small details that are, I'm really enjoying on this gun. One of the things I did this morning, just it's one of the things I do with most of the new guns I get, was to completely take it apart and put it back together so I could get an idea of how everything works internally and, and what's changed. Obviously I know my previous generation impact like the back of my hand inside. I've taken it apart many, many times. I took this gun apart and I noticed that there were just minor refinements on the whole valve and hammer assembly. For example, the hammer itself used to have a little rubber o-ring slash plastic washer um, in front of it so that when the hammer struck the valve, 
there wasn't that metal on metal ping and contact which sent vibrations through the gun. They've now basically connected that Delrin washer to the hammer as one unit. Just small things like that which make the gun function better, make the internal components last longer and makes them be able to handle more. And I do believe that the valving inside the plenum section of the year has also just been refined to suit the, the plenum better. So you're getting a really good flow of air when you take that shot and it feels like it's built to be working that way. One of the massive, massive um, design improvements that they've made is actually on this side and it is the quick tune, quick tune system. So previously you had a hammer with a um, few settings over here that you turn to adjust the hammer spring and then you had a small allen key on the side and you had to stick the allen key in and turn it to make fine tune adjustments. Well they've changed that now for the better. They now have a the same hammer wheel but with 16 settings so the slightly finer uh, settings over there less velocity jump between clicks and to make it even better they've now got the quick tune knob over here which is really tangible so instead of using an allen key you click that with your fingers up and down and they've got a bit of a scale over here so you can mark exactly where your settings are I've, this is fantastic because it allows people to share their tunes for example, Chris Turek from Up North Air Gunner was playing around with the 34 grain javelin slugs. He got a tune that worked well. He obviously got his, his test unit before me. And when I, got, when I got mine this morning, I was able to set mine exact, to the exact settings Chris had without any playing around or fiddling or shooting over a chronograph and fine tuning. And it was pretty darn close to the, the settings that Chris had. And I only had to make one or two clicks to basically get the exact same velocity he had. So that changes the game completely when it comes to getting the same results as somebody else. Very easy to share your tune. I actually, in the space of, it has to have been 10 or 15 minutes, plonked the barrel on, set the rig to where I wanted it. And within 10 minutes, I was shooting, well, this is only 25 meters, but I was shooting basically one hole, five shot groups, I'd say this is easily half MOA at only 25, but this is a 40 grain slug at blitzing speeds over 80 foot pounds. And you, I mean, that's, that's 10 minutes of owning this gun. So I know it's going to be good. <laughs> Sticking with a the theme of adjustability, we also have a dual regulator system. Now, this is something that many people predicted and kind of expected. When the Maverick was announced, everyone knew that the Impact Mark II's days were numbered, but it's the way that they did the dual rig system that I think surprised a lot of people, including me. We were kind of expecting some, you know, where, you, where are you gonna put a regulator on, on the Impact? There's no space, you'd have to redesign the gun, or would you? Because Frederick Axelson did something pretty ingenious and he managed to fit that, that regulator in that little stainless steel piece over there that fits between the bottle and the gun. So, and it works, it works well. It's very easy to adjust. The bottle still holds back pressure when you hold it off so you can take off your bottle at any time. And you simply stick an Allen key into that bottle adapter and you can set your first reg pressure there. Your full pressure is on this side. Your first reg pressure is on this side. And then obviously your second reg pressure is at the back. The second rig adjusts the same as the previous gun right over here behind the trigger. I'd say one of the only weaknesses that remained on the Mark II, although it was still better than the Mark I, but the, the gauges often didn't give as accurate a reading as you would have wanted, especially when it comes to the rear regulator gauge. FX now has wicker gauges as standard, which is awesome. So this gauge over here, the full pressure is a wicker gauge and the reg gauge on the rear is a wicker gauge and those are extremely, extremely um, reliable and accurate. The only gauge that isn't a wicker gauge is the first reg one, but to be honest, your first reg pressure doesn't matter too much. It only has to be in a ballpark. If it's 
10 bar up or down, it's not the end of the world. So they saved you a bit of money there as well. <laughs> Just a, sh a word on the double reg system for those who don't know what it is or what it does. It essentially um, allows for a larger pressure differential between your bottle and your main reg. So the issue with the power plan and having and being able to use such low reg pressures is that it increased your pressure differential between your front bottle and your rear bottle. So if you had your front bottle at 250 bar and your rear bottle, I mean your reg set at 60 bar, that's a big pressure differential and the reg struggles to keep up. So by having the first reg, you can essentially set your first reg 30 to 50 bar, even a bit more, higher than your second reg and allow your second reg to function very, very precisely and very well while your first reg takes the brunt of that um, pressure differential. So it helps with the precision of your second reg and basically stops it creeping completely, which improves your rifle's performance. It also opens the door for 300 bar bottles in the front, which are actually coming within the next couple of months, which is great news. We're almost done with the new features. The valve adjuster in the front here, this has changed over the years. On the Impact Mark 1 and Impact X, this valve adjuster was basically a knob that moved a rubber ball forward and backwards. And the rubber ball act as, acted as a mechanical stop for the valve rod. That then changed and the valve adjuster became a spring adjuster for the valve return spring. So when it was moved back, the spring tension was higher and the valve closed a bit faster. And when the valve was, the adjuster was out, the spring tension was a bit softer and the valve could close a bit slower, which meant a bit more power. This works the same as the Impact Mark II. The knob is just knurled nicely, which means it's a bit easier to turn. And I like the way this is designed as well because it enables you to switch out your valve return spring as well very, very, very easily without taking the whole gun apart. So the slug power kit comes with a weaker valve return spring, which basically just means that the valve is open for longer, which gives you more power. And that's really, really easy to adjust. So looking at Impact Mark 1 and the progression all the way to the M3, big, big, big improvements. And they just keep getting better and better. And lastly, right in the front, I'll have to take the silencer off to show you this, but essentially we have a interchangeable threaded uh, end cap over here. And basically what this means is that if you're switching calibers, you don't have to change your, um, your shroud as well. So the shroud is caliber changeable as well, which is one small attention to detail closer to being a perfect gun. <laughs> and that's pretty much it when it comes to the rifle itself. But one of the big things with the M3 is that there are quite a lot of aftermarket accessories that are coming within the next month that just kind of add to the whole package. Um, and I thought I'd run through those quickly because it's pretty important. If you're gonna buy this gun, you should know what is available for it um, as aftermarket parts. One of the things that makes the Impact such a popular gun. So I'm not even gonna remember these, so I'm gonna take out my notes here and I'll read them to you. <laughs> 300 bar bottle, finally that's going to just give you more shots per full. Good to have. Number two, there's an adjustable barrel tuner and dampener coming, courtesy of Up North Air Gunner and FX, who've worked together on this. This will allow harmonic tuning by moving a little weight up and down the barrel. It also has a dampener in the rear of the shroud, which just helps to remove vibrations. There's a carbon fiber barrel sleeve coming, and this is something that myself and Hein Frommann have been testing for a while. It just stiffens up the barrel a lot, and helps with temperature stability as well. The liner inside the housing isn't as free to move around. So this is very helpful for high power shooting, especially. And I found it's made a difference on my gun. So definitely something to look forward to. Maybe even my favorite accessory that's coming. Digital manometers made by Keller in Switzerland. Hands down the best gauges on the market. Battery lasts for like 10 years <laughs> and it's ridiculously accurate. Plus, there will be a gauge mount available so you can see your reg pressure while shooting. That's going to help as well. And lastly, we have a dual shroud, which increases the volume of the shroud to make it quieter. 
and a bunch of chronograph accessories, which I'm pretty excited about, including a built-in chronograph that fits in front of the barrel and a chronograph holder so that you can use the chronograph while shooting without affecting your point of impact. And that is it, guys. We will, of course, jump into more detail when we do a full review later on. We'll obviously do the whole, you know, shooting over the chronograph. We'll do 100-yard groups. We'll show you how, how the whole tuning system works and all of that. I just wanted to run through some of the some of the things that I'm really excited about. As you know, the Impact is the one gun that I want to pick up above all others when I, when I go hunting. So to have the upgrade version meeting my expectations and actually exceeding my expectations is something that relieved me a lot um, because I know that this is the gun that I'm going to be I'm going to want to be using and just really really happy about all of this so once again thanks for watching I do appreciate it I hope you learned something and if you enjoyed the video please do consider subscribing it helps a lot thank you